There's always new things to be trying on the homestead, but there's never enough time to try all of the things. So it's important to pace yourself. And I thought it would be really special not only to share with you guys one of the new things that we're doing on our homestead this year that I'm really excited about, but also to share with you what other homesteaders are doing on their homesteads this year that they're excited about so you could get some ideas and inspiration. One of the things that we are doing new on our homestead is instead of focusing just on food production for ourselves, we are looking at growing more of the food for our animals and our livestock. So typically we always you know, give the scraps to the chickens or when we have pigs, etc. But I'm looking at ways to supplement our feed specifically for our cattle this year. Usually we have grass growing in a normal year from May through about September, the first part of October. And then the rest of the year we're having to feed grass hay. But I would love to be able to supplement more of their feed and we can't really, we don't have enough acreage in order to do our own hay because if we were doing that then they wouldn't be able to eat the grass on it. So I am looking at ways to grow more things to feed them and one of them is actually kale. Cows love brassicas. Kale falls into that. So I've got some kale planted here. Now this is not going to be enough to feed cows by any stretch of the imagination. But what I'm excited is at the end of summer this year, I'm actually going to be seeding and broadcasting kale seed out in the pasture and doing some sections specifically of kale because our grass here starts, stops growing usually about October. But kale will overwinter really well. I leave it almost all winter here in our own garden for us to consume. And so I'm really hopeful that the kale will start to grow, almost act as a cover crop out in the pasture a little bit, but that will be something that will stay and we'll be able to supplement their feed with the kale instead of just feeding hay. Another thing that I'm excited about that they also like, and also the chickens, which you can't see it yet, but I have got comfrey that we put some crowns in underneath the fruit trees here, which will actually serve them well. And I'll do another video on that later. But the comfrey, you can't see it yet because they just got the crowns in the ground. But comfrey is also another thing that you can feed to livestock. It has a lot of other properties as well. So that's one of the things that we're focusing here and starting on the homestead that I'm really excited about. And now I can't wait to share with you what these other homesteaders are doing. Well, I'm Mike, also known on YouTube and Instagram as The Fit Farmer, and uh, I had a background in the health and wellness industry as a personal trainer, nutritional coach, and I ended up leaving all that to start being a farmer and homesteader. And my family pretty much sold everything we had when we were living in the city, moved out to the country, and started a homestead, and we live in a yurt, and uh, 700 square feet, my wife and three kids, and we're raising chickens, ducks, goats, and I've uh, been growing food. Uh, one of the things that we're doing different, uh, in the past we have done majorly been focusing on a market garden and that's been mostly uh, what we produced was market garden, garden items to sell to customers. Uh, but this year we're doing a land sab, so we're letting our garden areas rest and rejuvenate the soil and also for biblical reasons as well. And as we're doing that, we're gonna be taking that energy that we would be spending on the garden and putting it into other areas on our homestead like increasing our livestock and and really trying to improve those areas and systems and and the garden area that will be resting as things come up there'll be weeds and things coming up that don't normally have the opportunity to grow but some of those weeds will develop tap roots that will go deep down into the soil and bring up nutrients that aren't normally able to be brought up and hopefully that will regenerate the soil but on top of that we'll be bringing in animals into those areas which will also be eating the things that come up as well as leaving fertilizer behind so that we're just this is my first time doing it so I'm really excited to see how the soil will improve from before we did it until after we did it so it's pretty exciting so there's a statute in uh, the Bible uh, that talks about every seven years letting your land rest not to till it not to work it not to work it from a standpoint of production which has been the main focus but whatever grows of itself you can let that grow so there's been things that have grown and dropped like tomatoes have fallen over the past years and drop seeds and there'll be things that are coming up volunteers that are coming up and you can you can uh, harvest those things you can share those things with the poor you can feed that to your animals but the focus is different 
that seventh year opposed to the other six years where you're just mainly thinking on production, production, production. But no, it's kind of, and it also is a test of faith to see, is God really going to provide for me if I'm going to do what he says here? And he actually promises in the sixth year that he's going to give you more than the years before, which he did. We were intending fully to observe this land Sabbath. And then last year, the sixth year, we had more produce than we had ever had before. And he also asked another promise that after that, in the after the seventh year, the next year, that eighth year, when you start to cycle over again, that he's going to bless it even more. And it makes total sense that if you're putting, you're changing that energies and you're letting all this, the, the manure, the fertilizer, and the and the, the weeds that bring in the, uh, the tap root and bring those nutrients up, that you should have better soil after that cycle. So many farms are just over farmed and tilled and worked their land and there's just no there's no it's robbed of the nutrients and i think that's something that we're really missing in our culture now i'm stacy lynn harris and i homestead in alabama i have seven kids and we hunt for our meat and pretty much raise everything else from the garden um only go to the grocery store for flour and sometimes we don't do that because i will grind it so we pretty much just live off the land well one thing is that I am giving our land a break. I know that you were talking to Mike at some point, and he did the Sabbath Sabbath gardening. And I don't know that we actually thought to do that, but our land just wasn't producing like we wanted to. So we were like, okay, let's find another place on our land that we can have a garden, do that, and leave this for a year. We did do that, and you know, ultimately, I think it was the seventh year, which is very interesting. So I do believe that that is true. I think God does want us to rest on the Sabbath, and that is what our land was doing. We planted it this year with um, peas, like purple hull peas that grow great in our soil. That is a um, great cover, cover crop for us, and we're planting corn there, but we're not doing what we normally do, what we did before, which was the potatoes and, I mean, tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, you know, all of those nightshades. We're doing that at another plot of land that we have. So that's one thing we're doing that's different, and we also have an orchard, so we've added to the orchard um, and we've grafted uh, original trees you know onto the signs and we have planted those and they are thriving beautifully that's just another thing and then the third thing is we have recently um, come across wild hogs on our land so we are adding wild hog to our sustainable lifestyle they're very destructive. They had been there, but this year it seems that they've just like decided that this is where we love and this is where we want to live. And I went out there, and the most beautiful part of our land, I went out there, it was probably a week. And they had, they, they dug up every bit of that ground. They're great little tillers, you know, if you want to put them, you know, if you want to keep them for tilling the ground. But this is not where I wanted them. And they are horrible for turkeys because we have turkey eggs and, you know, that are in the brush. And they go in there and they eat the turkey eggs. So then we don't have a turkey um, population and they get the fawns of the new, you know, the new deer, you know, in our, um, you know, in our forest. And that's, that's horrible. So we've got to get that under control and they're good to eat. So we're enjoying that. Although our neighboring farmers, we have neighboring farmers that have cows. They cannot stand these wild hogs. They got 500 in one trap off of the property so they have really been starting to infiltrate and take over but um you know so anyway that's our plan for this year and that is what we're going to be adding to our table so what i'm most excited right now about our farm are, are kind of for two things one is that we're seeing this um as, as the supply chains and and what has always been considered efficient start to break down in fragility for the first time our pricing mechanism because we don't have long supply chains and we don't buy ammonium nitrate we don't buy potassium um, our little speedboat of a farm is 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 seems to be navigating these uh, these shoals of, of disturbance better than the great big aircraft carriers and so uh, from a pricing and marketing standpoint you know, pricing and everything but it is something uh, from a marketing pricing standpoint uh, we're able to actually come into equilibrium with some of the, you know, the more the more conventional uh, markets, which is really cool. Um, the second thing is that uh, that we're we're developing this kind of the farm as as a gathering place for um, you know for these for these uh, events gatherings. Uh, started last year, we kind of put our toe in the water, 
you know, when nobody was meeting and nobody wanted to go to a, you know, a Radisson or a, a Hilton or a Marriott. And um, we, we kind of put our hand up and we said, you know what, if your outfit wants to meet and you want to meet, you know, not with air conditioning, not in a building and, and in a pretty place, come meet here. And we had people say, yes, we'd like to come. And it just was a, it was a slam dunk. And so, um, so this year we've, you know, we, we, we've built a, a great big 300, 350 seat uh, amp, uh, um, amp, amphitheater on a hill, uh, three terraces. We call it the LLC, the Lunatic Learning Center, because I'm a lunatic. And, um, and we're having people just want to come. And, and organizations, I mean, I mean, our, our regional banker uh, said, could I come and have the, the, our, our annual bank conference here, you know? And so uh, we really see the farm in the future, as an MIT professor has predicted, we see the farm in the future as a, as a nexus where physical satiation, food, physical sustenance, fellowship, relationship, and information transfer those three things come together. That's an exciting time. <laughs> for me, it's actually having the opportunity to put in a food plot for deer hunting, <laughs> which I know sounds totally crazy, but I've been hunting all my life. I really enjoy it. And we have you know, our pig pastures are food plots. Our land, our forestry management is food plots for deer. So it all helps each other. We put in apple trees. That's great. for. I mean, all of it is helping the wildlife. But for just this time, had a little bit of luxury, a little bit of time, a little bit of money, and I got to put in a little food plot just to play around with. So it's fun. It's it's nice to see how all the things you do for the farm help the wildlife too, and they both help each other. So I think that's very fun, and when you get a chance to do both, it's just awesome. Hi, Jeremy Chambers, Independence Acres Homestead, out in Casco, Michigan. For those of you that don't know, that would put us about here on the map, right? If you're wondering what I'm doing there, go check out a map of Michigan. All right, so uh, we homestead on about five acres, uh, just me and my family. So the excitement never ends. But what I'm really excited about this year is we're expanding our garden. We're almost doubling the footprint of our garden. And we're going to be focusing mainly on, believe it or not, flowers for cutting, drying, and, and herbal remedies. Um, we're really deficient in in our area of the cut and dry flowers and really deficient in the idea of herbal remedies. And uh, we're really wanting to expand our home apothecary and be able to kind of share that knowledge with others in the area. And so this is going to be our first year really diving into it wholehearted. And honestly, we're going to be growing more of these types of plants than we are of our vegetables this year. Learning from others is always an excellent idea, and many of these people who you just got to see what they are doing have been guests on the Pioneering Today podcast. So highly encourage you, there's a link beneath this video, or you can find the Pioneering Today podcast with Melissa K. Norris on any app that you use to listen to podcasts, but go and check out the podcast for more information.